what does it mean to construct a number? A real number R is constructible if starting from a line segment of unit length, a line segment of length R can be constructed with a compass and straight edge in a finite number of steps. The study of constructible numbers is elegantly linked to four famous problems in Euclidean geometry. First, doubling the cube. Second, trisecting the angle. Third, squaring the circle. And fourth, constructing regular polygons. We will give the more detailed problem statements when looking at these problems later on in the video. But right now, let us be specific about the rules of the game such as how we are allowed to use our stretch edge and compass. Rule number one. We start with two given points in the Euclidean plane of unit length apart. These starting points are by default classified as constructed points. Rule number two. Given any two constructed points, we may construct an infinite line through them using the straight edge. In particular, a straight edge is different from a ruler in that the straight edge has no length markings on it. Rule number 3. Given any three constructed points A, B, and C, we may construct a circle with center at A and radius of length B, C. Last rule, rule number 4. The intersection points between any constructed lines and circles are considered constructed points. A real number R is said to be constructible if there exist two constructible points of length absolute value of R distance apart. A quick comment on rule number 3. Some of you may realize that this compass is more powerful than maybe what Euclid had. This compass is able to retain distance BC when it is lifted and then placed down again with the pivot at A. This is known as a fixed compass. Some harder versions of the rules only allow a collapsing compass, meaning that the compass collapses together whenever it is lifted off the page. For such a compass, the center of the circle must be one of the two points P or Q. However, it turns out that the use of a collapsing compass as opposed to a fixed compass is an unimportant restriction. Using a multi-step procedure, a distance can still be transferred with a collapsing compass. Interested viewers may refer to the Wikipedia article on the Compass Equivalence Theorem for the multi-step procedure. Okay, enough about the rules. How about we get into some action with a couple of warm-ups. Let's speed through these warm-ups. Warm-up 1. Construct the positive integers. Hopefully this is an easy one for you. With the two starting points at unit distance apart, draw a straight line through and repeatedly draw circles as shown. Here's something harder. Given a constructed line L and a constructed point P, construct a line perpendicular to L and passing through P. Well, firstly, construct a sufficiently large integer and use that to draw a circle centered at P and intersecting the line at points A and B. Draw a circle with center A and radius AB and another circle with center B and radius BA. The common chord is the desired line. This also checks if P lies on the line L to begin with. Check it. Okay, last warm up. Given a constructed line L and a constructed point P, construct a line parallel to L and passing through P. First, use warm up tool to draw a line through P perpendicular to L, and then use the same warm up to draw a line perpendicular to that. Now it is time for two challenges. Don't worry, we will get to the four Euclidean geometry problems shortly. Challenge 1. Given two points A and B that are distance R apart, construct square root of R. Are you able to solve it? This one is slightly tricky. First, draw the line AB 
and by drawing a circle of radius 1 around B, construct C which is a distance 1 away from B. Now we construct the midpoint of AC by doing the following procedure. First, draw two circles, the two circles shown, and we take the common chord. So this is actually the midpoint of AC which we shall call O. Once we have this midpoint, we can construct the circle with radius OA and also draw the line perpendicular at B using our warm-up question. What is the length of BD? You guess it, it has length square root of R, which you can prove by noting that triangles ABD and DBC are similar. That was pretty neat. Now for the next challenge question. Given constructible numbers P and Q, so that you can take sums, products, and reciprocals and still get constructible numbers. Well, sum is not too difficult. If A, B are distance P apart, draw a circle of radius Q centered at B, and we have P plus Q constructed. For products, the idea is to use similar triangles. Start with two points distance P apart. Draw a line perpendicular to B, and using circles of radii 1 and Q, find the points C and D as shown. We have the line AC, and we can draw the line parallel to that and passing through D. The distance between D and E is actually PQ. Now a very similar idea can be used to handle the case of the reciprocal, which we shall leave as an exercise. If you have more advanced mathematics background, you may have recognized that we have almost essentially shown that the set of constructible numbers is a few. Well, not, not this few that is on the screen right now, but few in a mathematical sense, which is a set of which addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are defined and obey certain nice properties. In this case, the set of constructible numbers lies strictly in between the rational numbers and real numbers. Through the reciprocal property and uh, addition and multiplication, we show that it contains the rational numbers. And it is strictly larger than that because it contains square root of 2, for example. We have not yet shown the existence of any non-constructible number, but we will see this shortly. And now we are ready to look at our four famous problems in Euclidean geometry, which had defied centuries of attack since Euclid's time. For these problems, we are going to need a lemma or a little mathematical proposition. If r is a constructible number, then it turns out that it must be an algebraic number and its degree is a power of 2. Recall that algebraic means that it is the root of some polynomial with rational coefficients. You may have heard of the opposite notion, where a transcendental number is one which is not the root of any polynomial with rational coefficients. So for example, square root of 2 is algebraic, whereas pi is a famous number, a famous example of a transcendental number. Now, if a number is algebraic, then there is a unique monic rational coefficient polynomial of lowest degree which is satisfied. This is known as its minimal polynomial. This polynomial cannot be factorized over the rational numbers, and all other polynomials which the number satisfy has the minimal polynomial as a factor. The degree of the minimal polynomial is known as the degree of the algebraic number itself. Our lemma asserts that this degree must be a power of 2. So we are going to accept this lemma at face value because the proof will require knowledge of field theory and is not feasible to cover in this video. And now let us start with doubling the cube. The problem statement is as follows. Given the edge of a cube, can we construct the edge of a second cube that has double the volume of the first cube? This question is equivalent to asking whether the cube root of 2 is constructible. We can easily check that the cube root of 2 satisfies the polynomial x cubed minus 2, and this polynomial cannot be factored over the rationals. You can prove the latter using Eisenstein's criteria, whose statement I have put up here for reference. Anyway, since the degree is 3, which is not a power of 2, 
The answer to our question is a resounding no. Next, trisecting the angle. If we can construct two lines meeting at angle 3 theta, can we construct two lines that meet at angle theta? We are sure that it is impossible for the choice 3 theta equals pi over 3 or 60 degrees. Firstly, we check that we can construct two lines meeting at 60 degrees. This can be done easily by constructing an equilateral triangle using the procedure shown on the screen. Well, assume on the contrary that we can construct two lines meeting at angle theta. Then we shall now show that cosine of theta is actually constructible. To do this, suppose the two lines L and L prime be at P. Construct Q on line L such that it is a distance one away from P and draw the line perpendicular to L prime passing through Q. In this manner, we have actually constructed cosine theta. But using the triple angle formula, we can show that the real number cosine theta satisfy the polynomial 8x cubed minus 6x minus 1. If this cubic polynomial can be factorized over the rationals, it must have a rational root. The rational root theorem limits the possible candidates and we can check that these candidates are all not roots of fx. Thus, the degree of cosine theta is 3. But cosine theta is supposed to be constructible. This is a contradiction. Next, squaring the circle. Given a circle, is it possible to construct a square of the same area? Well, if we start with the unit circle which has area pi, then the question is whether square root pi is constructible. Before proceeding further, we need a lemma which says that the square of an algebraic number is also algebraic. The proof is quite clever. Suppose our algebraic number R satisfies the polynomial F as shown, where we split into the even power terms captured by G and the odd power terms captured by X times H. Then we can multiply F by a conjugate term as shown in the middle to get a polynomial in X squared, for which R is a root. And now we rename x squared as x, making r squared now the root of the constructed polynomial. Okay, so that proves the lemma. So back to the original question. Now if square root pi is constructible, then square root pi and therefore pi are supposed to be algebraic numbers. This contradicts the well-known fact that pi is a transcendental number. So the answer to this question is also no. Lastly, let us take a look at constructing regular polygons. Given n at least 3, is it possible to construct a regular n gon? This problem is rather complicated, so we can only state the results. If we consider only prime numbers as a start, then the theory of constructible numbers gives us a necessary condition for a regular p gon to be constructible. The necessary condition is that p must be a Fermat prime, that is, p must be of the form 2 to the power of 2 to the power of k plus 1. As it turns out, Gauss proved that this condition is also sufficient. For general n, there is a well-known result, known as the gauss wanzer theorem, which characterizes the value of n for which it is possible to construct a regular n -gun. A regular angle is constructible if and only if n is a product of a power of 2 and any number of distinct Fermat primes. So that is all for this video. Hope this has been an informative video and you have learned something. Please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more mathematics videos. Thanks for watching.